Welcome back. This is The Key Points live on TV3, also live on 3FM 92.7, online at 3news.com and on Facebook at TV3 Ghana. So we will be taking the first topic, which is a look at what's happening with the medical laboratory scientists and um, the ongoing strike. We have a story that's been put together to give us some more perspective into the issue just before we launch into the conversation. So let's take a look at this story, uh, which is starting out from Accra here, then to uh, developments in Kumasi, particularly the Konfanochi Teaching Hospital and matters thereafter. Let's take a listen to this. Patients could not hide their frustrations and disappointment as they arrived at the laboratory department of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. Some said they heard about the intended strike in the news, but were hoping it was false. Though they declined to speak to the news team, their frustrations were telling. The patient is suffering. The, the, the doctor, you need to give me, the only thing you have to do is to give me a refund and give me my sample so that I can go elsewhere. And do it. But you collected this today that you collected my medicine. According to the medical doctor at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, Dr. Emmanuel Srofenyo, the strike would greatly affect services rendered at the facility. The situation in which we find ourselves is indeed worrying. If we have to run the hospital without support of the lab, the very sick patient, the kind of patients that are referred, also without the support of the blood bank, uh, maternity cases, pregnant women who have delivered elsewhere bleeding and being referred to the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, this is going to suffer indeed. He called for the speedy resolution of the matter. Management is in a closed-door meeting looking at the options, looking at the options that are available. But the most important thing and the most sustainable solution should be a quick resolution to the matter, to the grievances that they have, for which reason they have to embark on this exercise. That will be more sustainable. At the Arabaka Clinic, the laboratory department was locked with a notice placed on the door. But for some patients, they were allowed to take the lab results after which they were informed of the action. At the labor ward, the nurse in charge, Esther Jukamilia Benefu, said the situation could be dire as pregnant women are the ones who urgently require blood for safe delivery. We've had three babies as I speak. And thankfully, um, for those ones, they had already done their labs. so. They are not new cases. So we are just praying that we don't get a walk-in clan who really would need um, a lab investigation or need blood transfusion. That will really, really, I mean, I mean, disturb our, our work. The medical director, Dr. Abdul Razak Kwao, said management had devised mechanisms to deal with the situation. What we can do, probably, to bring private, but then to also let them know that this is a public place and they are coming as stopgap so they might have to reconsider their prices a bit. Actually I've made those calls and some of them are willing to reconsider their their prices. He asked the striking laboratory scientist to reconsider the action. Even those hematologists were not sent there to go and head the place, they were just sent to go and work there. So, but then they are envisaging that in future they probably might make them to head the place. But I don't think we should make decisions mm -hmm. in the future. I think they, they probably would have to reconsider it and then the, the strike might not be, be, be worth it. The strike by the laboratory scientists at the Confanoto Teaching Hospital continues to have negative impact on health delivery. All laboratories at the hospital have been shut, indicating a full-blown industrial action. Patients who require laboratory services are now left with no choice than to seek services from private laboratories. Management of the hospital, however, says measures have been put in place for emergency laboratory services. This is the first time the ministry has written to all those involved that it wants to finalize the resolution of this impasse once and for all. And I think the ministry should be given the chance and opportunity to resolve this issue for, in the interest of uh, the delivery of quality patient care at this hospital in Ghana as well. 
The laboratory scientists are unhappy over a decision by management of CAF to post some medical officers to the laboratory services directorate as clinical hematologists. They want this physician specialist removed from the lab directorate and reassigned. But management says the clinical hematologists and laboratory scientists have different job descriptions. The two professors have different job descriptions at this hospital. And therefore, the two doctors are not or have not interfered in any way in the work of the medical laboratory scientists. As a matter of fact, they are not even using the labs that are being occupied, that are being used by the medical laboratory scientists. None of the labs are being headed by the doctors who were posted there. So there's no encroachment whatsoever. So it was surprising to hear that those doctors have been posted there to take over the job of the medical laboratory scientists. It has never happened at this hospital. The laboratory scientists have resolved not to return to posts until the two medical officers are removed from the laboratory services directorate. Right, so that was the story put together there, uh, bringing into perspective the real issues here for conversation. Um, I have in the studio with me Dr. Franklin Niama. He is a former Greater Accra Chairman of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists. Good morning, Doc. Good morning and good morning to your cherished viewers. Great. It's good to have you. Let uh, me also take the opportunity to say a very good morning to the rank and file of the Ghana Association of Medical Laboratory Scientists. Very well. We cannot fail. Very well. We'll, we'll be delving straight into mm. issues here, but let me also indicate that we will be joined by two members of the Parliamentary um, Health Committee uh, and um, to have this conversation. So when they come through, we'll do the needful and introduce them accordingly. But for now, we shall carry on with um, Dr. Franklin here. As I said, it's great to have you here. Obviously, the whole week has been you know, dedicated to this discussion because it's very important. The patient is at the core of this issue, at the heart of it, is this whole issue, and the dire consequences on patients and the country in general cannot be um, overstated. But we would also want to understand uh, where medical uh, laboratory scientists are coming from. Let us understand exactly what triggered this. We hear in the media that it was due to some uh, the fact that two medical officers were posted to the Confanoche Teaching Hospital um, 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 Directorate of the um, um, Medical Laboratory Services there. But let us understand, now that you're here, let us hear it from your perspective I think that well. this morning I will make sure that if there is somebody out there who want to vilify medical laboratory professionals because we have embarked on a strike, by the time we are done with this program, I want to believe that you will understand the issues and you will come to our aid and we will fix the health sector. Mm. Uh, the point must be made that it is not about the space that we are fighting about. Okay. It is not about space. People want to oversimplify the argument and talk about it as if it is a laboratory space and some others want to come and function and ply their trade, what they, have, what they have been taught and learned to practice. That is not the case at all. Okay. The case is about curtailing the development of a group of people, i.e. medical laboratory professionals. Now, it is the need of every profession to progress, to grow, and to be significant and to contribute. These are the issues that we want to bring to the fore. That the issues surrounding our work, it is making it impossible for us to be significant, to contribute, and then to grow as a people. And there is a lot of uncertainty too. And these are needs of every profession and every human being. To that extent, we have, and I want to put on record, that we are the only group in recent times who are, will embark on a strike, and it is not about the bread and the butter issue. The issues that raise this ugly head at Confernoche, the point must be made that it happened in 2015 first in Kolibu, where two LPs were posted to the central lab. It resulted in a scuffle and agitation. Some way, somehow, the matters died down and work was going on. In 2016, 
when we wanted our policy to be launched, the issue came up again, and it is the same issue. The issue is about who to lead in the laboratory and who to manage the laboratory. So in 2015, it was the same issue, who to lead and who to manage. Sure. And then 2016, it came up sure. again in the same issue. The same it wasn't issue. resolved, but you went on nonetheless. You, yeah, you so of the 20, 2016, it resulted in a strike. Mm -hmm. And then the issue went to the ministry. The committee was formed mm -hmm. to look into the matters. Because we had our position, and they had their position. Their position was that, in summary, that all the laboratories at all the levels up to the district were to be led and managed by laboratory physicians. We are of the view that by the details clearly spelled out in the law, the space and the boundaries of medical laboratory professionals, nurses, pharmacists, is one that is sanctioned by law. Mm -hmm. It is not at the discretion of anybody. You do not have the luxury to decide that this is my boundary. It is sanctioned by law. I can agree that our work overlaps at a point, but it is one that is sanctioned by law. We were clear in our mind that the law stated clearly that the medical laboratory space is for the medical laboratory scientists. When I say it's for, it doesn't mean that if you are doing some research and you are a doctor, you cannot come into the space and do. But take note that to diagnose a human being, that is where we function. And that is what the law says, that you need to be licensed by the Allied Health Professions Council before you can practice. And so that was our position against their position. Their position when you say was their that, position, who, who do you mean? So, who are you referring to as their? So our position was we Mm -hmm. are capable and we will lead the lab. Sure. It is important to put in perspective that history has it that medical doctors were the ones that have led, led the lab all this while. That's the history. But you see, let me make a point that Commander Hill was the first governor of the Gold Coast. Does he still have a right and stakes to become the president of Ghana? So that which you had before because somebody did not have capacity, even though he is the one clothed with the power and authority to function. If you find yourself functioning in that space, it doesn't mean that it is your alienable right forever. The dynamics and the space of the medical laboratory science have changed tremendously. And today, as we speak, we have developed and we have capacity. Mm. We oftentimes deliberately, and watch those who call us technicians, medical doctors, it is deliberate. Very because well. Because they want to portray us as a people who do not have capacity. I, just a minute, Dr. Franklin. Um, let me quickly announce that we've also been joined in the studio by Honorable Kwabna Minta Akando. He is the MP for Drabuso, and he is a ranking member of the Parliamentary Health Committee. And good morning. You're Good welcome, Honorable. Thank you. Very it's great to have you. Good. So back to you, Doc. I, I, I mean, see, the issues are very technical that, I mean, we would need to break it down further. Sure. For people listening, I'm sure they're wondering, you talk about medical doctors and ta technicians. I introduced you as Dr. Franklin Ama. People listening might say, ah, but you're also a, a doctor, aren't you? <laughs> so yeah, what is uh, it? So first of all, let us I, understand. I think that in the hospital space, Let's just get it. Exactly. in the hospital space to the commoner, every male you see is a doctor, <laughs> and every feminine you see <laughs> is a nurse. <laughs> okay. But, but, but that is not the case. Yes. So I am a doctor, mm -hmm. but I am a doctor of medical laboratory science, okay. which is a, a CCS program, is a first degree. And so you're not a medical doctor? I'm not a medical doctor. Good. I'm a doctor so of medical So not every doctor you science. see in a hospital is a medical doctor. And I there are that, doctors yes. who also have PhDs. Mm -hmm. Mine is a first degree CCS doctor of medical laboratory science. Mm. Same as the CCS MBCHB for medical doctors. Mm. We have doctors for pharmacy, doctor for optometry. Okay. So we are on the same level. Very well. Fantastic. Now, now, yes, I will be coming to you, um, Honorable, but let's 
Let me interrogate something further. You, you, you said that you, your, your strike is not about bread and butter. That's right. But about recognition, as it were. That's right. Um, the the being appreciation. Given, like being given the space, space and the leverage to, to contribute to what we were taught and learned to practice. Very well. But let's just get this as well. Let's, let's just understand it. So the two medical doctors who were posted to cast to the Medical Arbitrary Directorate, what were they posted there to do? I am unable to speak to that because I do not have their job description and what exactly they were posted to, there to do. So by the mere fact that medical doctors have been posted to that but before we jump it the agitated. Gun, before we jump the gun to that side, take note that this matter was a subject of contention between us and medical doctors, simply put. And the matter was not determined yet. A report of the IHS committee was submitted to the minister. The nitty gritties must be discussed. Sure. We can now agree that at some point, when cool heads prevail, that our work cross at a point. Mm -hmm. Before that could be done, so I and Honorable Year, we have a litigation issue on the land. The minister says that, okay, we are looking at the issue. We are here to determine it. And before I know it, Honorable is mobilizing to go and build on the land. You know why? Because Honorable's members are one of a kind in management. Okay. The <laughs> ultimate leadership position, the point must be made, is the sole preserve of medical doctors. Mm -hmm. And in this work that we do, the health professionals, if you do not know, we are highly chauvinistic. It is like a court group, and you could be whipped in line. And so it is not surprising, even though very disappointing, that the Confanoche management will go out of the way when they know that this thing has brought a lot of agitation on the front of medical laboratory professionals and doctors before. Yeah. So to go out of a way and jump the gun and post two people to the hematology unit is, 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 is just something I, I try to understand. The audacity to do that when the matter is with the minister. And, and so, take, so you're saying take, that until... Note, until and that, that, that matter you're talking about, the one that is unresolved, dates back to when? So, so that, that's about to 2016. And that hasn't been resolved. And yeah. so you're saying until that is resolved, there should be no that is the sensible posting thing to of do. medical doctors' that is the positions who have to, to do. So take note, of the shenanigan. Of take note of the shenanigan that is go, going on. They say that it is the sole preserve of management to appoint and to disappoint. But isn't that true? Now, if, if you sit outside and you do not understand where we are coming from, you think that, ah, but this is a valid statement. Mm -hmm. It is the sole preserve to appoint and to disappoint. Yes. But who is appointing authority? Very well. Don't. One of your kind. We, 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 we will be interrogating further, but in your submission, you made reference to the law, the law, the law. That's and right. I believe that's Act 857. That's right. So rather than make general statements, mm -hmm. I think when we come back to you, we we'll would be making specific references that's to the right. position. Because I believe that that's would right. help the conversation a lot more. But honorable. The Health Committee in Parliament, you're faced with a tough one now. <laughs> so, from Dr. Franklin's perspective or his narration, as far back as 2015, there was an issue, um, not necessarily resolved definitively or conclusively, which is why it read its head again in 2016, and again, not necessarily resolved conclusively or definitively, and now we've seen it come back. So, what is this tension about, and what is being done to deal with it conclusively. Yeah, thank you very much. And let me say good morning to your viewers and uh, start by saying that every parliament is a new one. So the seventh parliament is different from the eighth parliament. The sixth parliament is also different from the seventh parliament. That's number one. Number two, there are procedures and processes mm -hmm. to, uh, for a matter to be referred to various committees in parliament. And so I've had the opportunity to speak to some members of the uh, lab scientists and uh, I've, to some extent advise them accordingly. 
Let me also say that, uh, in my humble opinion, everybody, every department in the healthcare delivery is very important, mm -hmm. including the cleaner. Sure. I'm saying that most of the issues in the health sector has to do with recognition and respect. If we get this thing clear, it will mitigate some of these things going on, these tensions going on in the health sector. But let me ask this. Medical laboratory scientists, this is not a recent phenomenon. It's not, it's, it's not a, a new profession. It's been in the system for as long as we know. Yes, so yes. why the recent tension? You Why see, do you think that has happened? And let me indicate, sorry, that um, we're expecting <coughs> to be joined by the chairperson of the uh, Parliamentary Health uh, Committee. And um, we're trying to reach him. We're not getting him. So if anybody knows his whereabouts, they should try and get his attention that we're trying to get him on the line to help uh, resolve this issue that we have. So hopefully we're joined by the chairperson of the Health Committee in Parliament. Yes. You see, um, I'm being very careful on this matter because I do not want to take size. Because most of these Definitely issues, not. yes, most of these issues um, end up at the parliamentary select committee. Mm -hmm. So if you're a ranking member on the committee, and you are head taking size in the media, you don't the have to take sides exactly. at all. We so won't even encourage you to. Some, mm. some, sometimes, if you are not very careful in your attempt to give detailed explanation, somebody sitting somewhere may know or may see where you are skimming towards or shifting towards. But I'll try as much as possible to, I mean, yeah. contribute carefully. Um, as he has already indicated, you see, they could be working harmoniously probably for some time now. But at a point in time, people recognize that they have a particular position that they fit and they are being denied of that particular position. So they could start some kind of agitation. It doesn't necessarily mean that um, because they have worked in harmony for a very long time, if they have identified something that is not going on well, they cannot say so. You understand? And so, for me, I think that they, they must take their time, and I have stated it on several platforms, that you see, unfortunately, those who bear the brand of these strike actions are the common Ghanaian. The, the ordinary Ghanaian who may not be able to afford to go to the private laboratory. Okay. It is not the minister who must resolve this issue. It is definitely not him. It is not the CEO of Companoche who must resolve this issue. Okay? And so... But who should? I, I, I'm saying that they will not bear the brand. These people will not bear the mm -hmm. brand of the strike, but they must resolve the issue. Sure. Are, are you getting the point okay. I'm making? At the end of the day, it is my grandmother in the village exactly. who, ultimately. ultimately, who will bear the brand of the strike action, who has no, I mean, um, power or authority to resolve the matter. Mm. I think that this matter shouldn't have even gotten to this far because the strike action started about a week, more than one week ago, and it began from Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Every sector has a minister. Okay, every sector has a minister. I do not think that for the past one week, the minister has heard that there is some strike action going on in Kompuanochi. Sure. Why has it been escalated up to this point? At least, and I had some, I had the opportunity to talk to one of them, and he said they wanted to meet the minister, and the minister says there's a particular roadmap. We don't do that. If there's an issue, you engage, you listen, you are abreast with the facts, and then you help in the resolution. And that's exactly what we have appealed to the lab tech, uh, what you call scientists, that they must go back to the laboratories and engage us. They must petition us. We will have the opportunity to listen to them and we will invite all the stakeholders and try and resolve the matter. Very well. We now, have done it before. Now, Dr. Franklin, his ambition indicated that this, like I said, it happened in 2015, came back in 2016, and now we have this. So at the level of parliament, the, the subcommittee in parliament, what what do you have in respect of this issue? We, we don't have anything. So you, you it has never it has it's it never not petitioned to and that is why I started by saying that every parliament is a new one. You may have some members of parliament on a parliamentary select committee on health in two thousand and fifteen. You may not have a single one of them on the committee now. There should be documents, shouldn't it? Of course there should be yes. documents. And what are the documents saying? Well, as far as I am concerned, issues of this nature has never been referred to the committee before. Hmm. You understand? They Is that the case? They, they have never been referred well, to. So, so you are hearing from the honorable yes. himself. So they, uh, that is why I'm saying that the association must, if they think that they are not getting justice or they are not getting, I mean, uh, the, the, the attention of the minister, they can petition us. 
we are one arm of government. And we are ready to listen to them because our constituents are suffering. Very well. Now, Doc, you, 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 you indicated that there was some form of, you know, a, a certain process that had been started which hadn't been concluded, which That's is right. why you said until that is concluded, you don't, in your no, perspective, think there should be I'm any such thing. What i reasonable thing. No, I get it, but I just want us to understand that process, what it is about and where it is, and if, indeed, there are any plans to actually carry it through. Because Honorable Akando mentioned that um, the minister had said that there's a certain um, blue print or a, a road, road map. map that's what i've heard so if indeed there's a certain road map then perhaps it ties in with what you're saying that there's something that should be done in terms of the process that was started which is ongoing which is why i just want us to understand it because we can't always necessarily be doing ad hoc things if there's a process then we need to see it through and perhaps that is something that so, your association should be so if we are for. all law abiding mm -hmm. and we are following due process we wouldn't be where we are today there was a subject for litigation. Minister constituted a committee that I do not have capacity to understand the issues. So in the wisdom of the minister, he brought three eminent men together, chaired by Professor Ite himself. Mm -hmm. And they looked at the issue. They invited stakeholders, not only the two of us right. that are having the contention, the main contention invited teaching hospitals board they brought their views uh -huh. and the report is ready that's a december 2018 report that's right okay the report is ready and what does the report say in terms of the way forward so 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 the report has various shades sure. of things that needs to be discussed uh -huh. a report doesn't mean that you go and implement it as it is because there may be relevant portions of the law you see it's not everything that you use discretion some, the dictates of the law must be followed. And so what I'm saying is that whatever the case is, there was a report. We need to sit around the report, have a dispassionate discussion, because I'm telling you that the issue of demarcation of what we do is just something that has been sanctioned by law. Right, and uh, let's because, speak to that because it's a demarcation that is on the table now to an mm -hmm. extent. Let's speak to that. Mm -hmm. What does the law say about that? So the law, our position... And that is the Health Professions Regulatory right. Bodies Act of 2013, uh, right? That part one, seven. I yes. think section That's 21. That's allied health professional, yes. It stated clearly who can function in the space of the medical laboratory. Section what? Now, section 21. Uh -huh. Please check for me. I will look it up. Yes, uh -huh. you carry on. Carry on. Yeah. It stated clearly who can function in the space of the medical laboratory. Now, it is emph emphatic, let me stress here, that the part two that talks about the Medical and Dental Council is silent on laboratory physicians. I am suggesting to you that these people are the people <laughs> at the helm of affairs. And they plan that when medical laboratory science evolves in this country, Perhaps the milk aspect that comes to them will be lowered. And so they planned it and insisted that contrary to best practices that we should all abreast ourselves with, so that medical laboratory people, having gotten capacity now with consultants in our midst, can also rise to the pinnacle and manage our affairs. Yes, can, yes, I, I, can I come in here? Please, yes, you see, please if my brother says this, he is not trying to be fair to us because there have been instances where, and you see, as I in, initially indicated, some of these things will boil down to legislation. Sure. You understand? That's where we come in. I remember very well last year, there was issues about representation on boards in the teaching hospitals. They were not there. They came, they made strong positions. I mean, your Ign Dr. Ignatius, those people, they met us. And then we understood them. Now they are represented on those boards. Mm. You understand? And so that is why I'm saying that you cannot resolve the issues outside. There's a need for you to approach the approach. We play a supervisory role on every health sector in this country. Right. So if you think that you are not getting the justice you need at the ministerial level, you have another I'm option. There are so many that. avenues available to you. Right. So my brother, don't let us unnecessarily punish the ordinary Ghanaian. And mind you, 
you need the public sympathy. Mm. It is very important. Don't lose it. Mm. Don't lose the public sympathy. You have striked for some time. It is enough. Come back. Let's talk. Let's engage. We are not afraid of anybody. We don't lose anything. We will sit down. If we think that, I mean, they are cheating you, we will say so. But if you continue striking, 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 people lose their life. What will the, we the, the impact is just no, no, no. unbelievable. Okay. And we have a story no, to no, that effect. Let's respect. take a listen to, to that. Do, that will come respect. to you. But let's look at the impact of course. the strike is having on the ordinary Ghanaian. This is focusing on development at Kolebu Teaching Hospital. Let's take a look at this. At the Kolebu Teaching Hospital Central Laboratory, it was evident the staff were on strike. Patients who had come for lab services had to go back, except for those who had previously done their test and were there for their results. What they told us is that those who pay already do work on their things. The doctor was admitted here for the past two months. We were discharged and went home. But we were given a request to come and do this. This is a place we normally do our labs. But today when I came, they said they don't do it here. But I don't know if it is because of the strike or it's true that they don't do it here. So I'm going to find another place to do it. The laboratory department of the Greater Accra Regional Hospital was also shut to the public. The Barrage Hospital, I was asked to do a scan to check the position of my baby. I came to the lab and I was told the staff are on strike. I may have to go outside and do the test because my life is more important. My daughter delivered here and samples of her blood were taken. We were told to come for the results today. They be a cobra two times a day. They say we buy a barber jar and they are called doctors and say we come and they are some concern. We need blood for my mother, who has been operated upon, but the staff are on strike. We can't get the blood. Those who had previously done their lab tests and were told to come for the results were even more frustrated. My mother my mother seriously needs blood transfusion. We donated the blood yesterday and we're told to come for the results today. Now, we don't know what to do. That was three days ago I did a test. I was told to come yesterday for the result. I was here yesterday and they told me that my result isn't ready. I was here around three o'clock. So I was told to come today. Only but to find out they said they are not working, that they are on strike. I'm, I'm really, really disappointed because if they, they just took the decisions today, they should consider the people they've already given an appointment for their result instead of just bluntly refusing to attend to them. But medical director at the hospital, Dr. Emmanuel Srofenu, explains. The facility is working with the lab leadership to make sure that those tests that have been done already, during the time that there was no strike, and they have duly paid, it is only fair that we put in place a mechanism so that they can get their results. But the Ghana Police Hospital Laboratory was open to the public. As a result, many patients were trooping in. Silently and gradually, the numbers are increasing. Normally, by afternoon, the numbers there will be in single figures, but the place is still full. DSP Yao in Yabua appealed for support for the laboratory. Since we cater for more and more civilians, there's the need for the public to also come to our aid whenever they go to the aid of other medical facilities. That is why we are drawing this attention that because of the strike, uh, we will need more PPEs. Right, so that was a story put together there to get us to understand the impact that this is having. And mind you, this is just at the Kolibutation Hospital, so you can imagine uh, the impact nationwide because this strike has actually now taken uh, a nationwide dimension and definitely causing a, a whole lot of um, havoc um, around the country. We continue with the conversation here. Um, uh, yes, you, exactly, please make a statement. In it, yes. That is exactly the reason why we came in to appeal to them. Mm. The impact, the constituents are calling. You sit by the TV and you see some of these things. You think that 
if the minister wants uh, a lab done, some test done, you can't get it because you're on strike. Mm -hmm. Or the confinement see woman want something done because she's on strike, you can't not get it. But it's my grandmother or that ordinary woman. I know, so I think that at this point in time, they must call off their strike and then we can be. I'm a, I mean, <laughs> I'm an opposition. Quickly, let's cross over to the telephones. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Um, Titus Bayou join us. He's with the Ghana Medical yeah, Association. Yeah, good morning, Doc. Hello, good morning, Doc. Dr. Bayou. Good morning. Good. How are you doing? Thanks for joining us. Thank you, and thank you for having me. Good. So, yes, uh, we are talking about the situation that's supposed to be one that, you know, we have the two sides collaborating, but uh, it looks like that is becoming a difficult situation. Uh, what, what, what is the situation? What, what, what do you make of this uh, supposed or seeming tension between uh, medical laboratory scientists and medical officers. What exactly is the situation about? Um, so once again, good morning to the viewers, good morning to the panelists in studio, uh, and good morning to all health workers in general. I should say that it's a very unfortunate development that should not occur at all in the healthcare team. Like you said, we are actually a team and we are supposed to collaborate. Uh, but as it is, Unfortunately, this is what we find ourselves, and I hope that we'll be looking for the solution. And uh, as you know, the genesis of it, I don't think I have to go over it. Mm -hmm. They are insisting they don't want medical doctors in the lab. Uh, and it looks like every now and then, the demands keep changing. First, it was that the doctors would take leadership positions. And then I keep hearing there's a grand agenda, there's a grand scheme. We are not sure exactly what it is. But the critical thing is that I... the view of the medical association is that these two professional bodies must coexist mm -hmm. and be allowed to practice their profession as they've been trained and licensed to do. And that is just our simple uh, explanation of what we expect to be. Very well. Now, um, listening to um, Dr. Franklin Amma here, who is with the Medical Laboratory Association, he says that uh, you know, their, their agitation is not really about bread and butter matters, but that of the need for recognition and being able to, you know, give them yeah. that space to operate in the space that they deem to be for medical uh, laboratory scientists. So about recognition, the respect, and those matters that, you know, ultimately um, gives their profession some legitimacy, if you like. That is the okay. issue. So what is, what, what is happening in the, in the medical or the healthcare environment is it the case that medical laboratory scientists are looked down upon by other um, um if you like um fraternities within the healthcare system uh, is that what it is because that's what i'm hearing or I'm, I'm beginning to pick up well uh, you can view anything from two sides from the side of the medical association mm -hmm. we do not think that we ever look down on our laboratory scientists mm -hmm. we need them we work with them um, and they are very trained, very well trained, highly skilled to provide the service they provide. So if it is an issue of recognition, honestly, I don't think innocent lives must suffer for the sake of recognition. Mm. And the question is recognition by who? Other members of the healthcare team? And then why is the emphasis only on doctors? Are doctors looking down on laboratory scientists? I don't think so. We have relatives, we have co-workers, we have bosses who are med medical laboratory scientists. In fact, if you look at the genesis of this problem, the current impasse, which is happening at KNUS, the lab that we are referring to, the head of that lab is a laboratory scientist, not a medical doctor. And therefore, these people who have gone there will work under this person and they will work in harmony. Our medical students are trained in parts by them and will work in harmony. They respect them, they mark them, they grade them. Mm. Some of our doctors who are specializing in this laboratory medicine actually train under them for their lab, uh, bench work. You know, we've done programs together with some of them. I did my master's together with some of them. Some did PhDs, even higher. So I don't see the issue of legitimacy. Even legitimacy as well, this profession is recognized by the Health Professions Act. Mm -hmm. And the act defines who that professional is how they should be licensed and certified to work. That same act in another part defines who a medical doctor is, how we should be licensed to work. 
I want the fundamental questions answered. And I don't think shifting the goalposts every now and then is helpful. Mm. Question is, is it that they don't want any doctor in the lab? If that is it, why? And I keep hearing, we'll be the lame, whoever should go focus on what they are. These doctors are trained to work in the lab. They are clinical laboratory uh, physicians, which means they combine the lab work with clinical work to give us a final report. So I really wish they will come clear so that we know what the issues are. But if it is recognition, then I think a different route should be used and not causing the country to run from If that you think the current law in its form doesn't give it enough recognition, ask for a review of the law. Mm. If you think there are some policies that do not give it enough recognition, ask for a review of those policies. But don't hold the country to run from And we are cautioning the leadership of this country, all other stakeholders, that we should not act in the middle of a emergency, and I think that's what they are trying to create. When they create a national crisis, a national emergency, then we find a quick fix political solution or emergency solution to this. But this has serious potential to disintegrate the entire healthcare system. Now, so Doc. If we decide today mm -hmm. that, yes, laboratory scientists, no doctor should go to the lab, which will be illegal, and the GMO will resist that because we will be killing one entire specialty of medical practice. Mm. But it is going to open a Pandora box where the radiographers will say they don't want radiologists to work there. Where the, in fact, the, the Allied Health Professions Council represents about 17 professional bodies. And these professional bodies work hand in hand with doctors. And we all work together. If everybody says they want to be independent, they don't want to have anything to do with any doctor, then what kind of system are we creating? And in which country have we seen this? Right. I think this will be my initial submission on that. Very well. Thanks for that. But lastly, before you go, what do you think uh, should be the way forward? I mean, because obviously, like you said, the ordinary citizen cannot be left to suffer the brunt of this. What should be the way forward? We do know that there's an NLC uh, National Labor Commission here in schedule for 2nd of June. But before that, obviously, something should give so at some point. What would you recommend? The is that all of us appeal to our colleagues to come back for us to work. They should itemize their claims clearly or consent clearly and let's sit around the table and talk. But okay. they should be mindful that the medical work, clinical work, hospital work, healthcare work in general is a team work. Mm. And we all need each other. Very well. No one has any intention to make another profession subservient, as they keep saying. And mm. I'll make this clear, the GMA does not intend to do that. Mm. But one thing they need to recognize, that in some areas, when you have finished your technical work, a clinical person also needs to add a clinical eye to it. Because that person knows some aspects of the patient you do not know. Mm. And remember, we are not treating results. We are treating a human being. When any doctor just looks at your last result and treats you without talking to you, without examining you, that is not a properly trained doctor. So let us sit and talk. Mm. Let's not hold the whole country to ransom. Very well. And let us find amicable grounds. Very well. We recognize that profession and we are happy for any other professional group for that matter to be highly skilled and highly trained. If it takes the nurses, they have consultant nurses now. We are happy to work with them. We've never protested. Pharmacies have their counsel. They can change that level. They have their counsel, the West African College. They can train in the college to fellowship. We are happy because it brings out better professionals for us to work with. Very well done. Let us sit down because we do not see, it looks like we are chasing, chasing after a shadow that does not exist. We do not see any attempt to hijack, to suppress, prevent growth of any other discipline of medicine. Very well, we thanks, want everybody to go to their fullest. So we should not talk. So I appeal to the doctor in the studio or the lab scientist in the studio and all the colleagues that look, let's sit down and work. But Very my well. final bit will be to government. Okay. And and I'm happy that uh, Honorable is in the studio and other um, um, government functionaries and uh, parliamentarians who have the power to make rules. Mm are listening to this situation. Very well, you Doc. should be careful. There's no quick fix to this. Thanks, Doc. We I think we can hear it. We can, we can end it. We can end it. in a hasty manner. And Very well, Doc. Do anything that jeopardizes another profession. We'll end it here. We will not tolerate that. Thank you.
Thank you too. Thank you so much. Uh, that was Dr. Titus Bayou. He's with the Ghana Medical Association. You heard his views there as well, calling for a talk or discussion around the table as has been said here also by Honorable Minta Kando. Indeed, and that's what the generality of people in Ghana are saying. We'll take a break at this moment. When we come back, I will come back to you, Dr. Franklin Amma, because I know you have a lot to share with us. We will come to you very soon. So this is a key point. Stay with us. We'll be right back.